pvbuzz.com is a solar news organization, so specifically related to the solar side of green energy. Where does solar fit in Ontario's energy future? Well, uh, solar is already playing a useful role in Ontario's electricity supply. Uh, it's one that doesn't show on the websites that people normally use for following electricity supply because most of the solar, 87% of the solar is embedded, that is connected to local distribution mm -hmm. companies and not to the grid, so it tends not to show up. But it's actually playing a significant role already in reducing peak demand on hot summer afternoons, which is when we have our highest electricity demand in Ontario, which is also the most expensive to meet. Right. Uh, solar can continue to help with that. The, uh, and as solar efficiency grows, it becomes more and more cost effective. Having said that, we are always going to be a long way from the equator. Right. And so the intensity of solar energy here is not as great as it is in places like Morocco mm -hmm. um, and the southern United States. And so it's, you don't get as much for your buck right. uh, from solar in Ontario as we do in some other places. And so it, solar will need to be cheaper mm -hmm. uh, and probably easier to integrate into buildings, so the kind of roof tiles that um, um, Monk is talking about might help a lot in making it easier to incorporate solar into buildings. We also need a better system for utilities of incorporating solar into their business model because a lot of the cost for electricity utilities comes in being available. Mm -hmm. And if more and more people get a lot of their energy from sun and just count on the grid for backup, mm -hmm. then the financial burden on the grid of being that backup is greater. So there's a, there's a financing challenge there. Right. The biggest issue for solar is that people want to be able to use power mm -hmm. whenever they want it, mm -hmm. not just when the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. And solar doesn't provide any power at all at night Right. Um, and much less power when it's cloudy or rainy. Mm -hmm. So we, to have a much larger role for solar, we need a combination of storage mm -hmm. and pricing tools. Mm -hmm. so we've traditionally had the view that demand is king and supply has to follow demand right. at any cost. Right. Uh, what I showed in, in this report mm -hmm. is some of the reasons why that's poor, that's poor public policy. Right. We should be doing much more to give people a financial incentive to use power when we have extra. Right. Now, Ontario is quite unusual um, on a world basis that so much of our electricity comes from nuclear and renewables. In fact, in uh, 2018, 94% of our electricity came from nuclear and renewables. And they, um, so the first thing is that they don't follow demand. Right. So nuclear basically does this. You get nuclear all the time. It's difficult and expensive and disruptive to turn nuclear plants on and off. So they can't easily follow demand. And renewables, well, solar and wind in particular, the solar only, only is available when the sun is shining, which mm -hmm. we can't order. It comes when it comes. Mm -hmm. And wind only is available when the wind blows, which we also can't command. So our demand is this, right? and renewables uh, other than water and nuclear don't follow that pattern. And so what that means is we have a mismatch. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have extra power. Nights and weekends, especially spring and fall, we have a lot of extra power in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So we make about a quarter billion dollars a year selling some of that extra power to the US, even mm -hmm. though we sell it cheaply. Yes. Um, because it's better financially than not using it all because we're making it anyway and there's no extra cost to making it. Mm -hmm. But when demand is high, mm -hmm. then we have a problem and that's when we're using peaking plants like, like natural gas. So we need to pay a lot more attention to reducing demand and some of that's conservation. Mm -hmm. And I've just put another report out on the tremendous, where it is here somewhere, economic and environmental advantages of conservation. Mm -hmm. Um, and we need, we need storage and we need pricing right. tools. But the first thing is conservation. Putting a whole batch of solar panels on a leaky building right. is silly. It makes much more sense 
to reduce the demand of the building mm -hmm. and then put much smaller solar systems on it. Um, saves money all the way around, makes the whole thing more effective. Working in cooperation. Right. Right. Um, so we have this abundance of power. That sometimes. Sometimes. And sometimes we're not effectively utilizing it. Correct. So what steps could we take to have this power that's at low or, or in some cases no cost that we could better utilize in Ontario? Right. Well, we have a whole chapter on that on the Electricity <laughs> Report, which I am going Please to show, show, show you again. Okay. Yeah. We have a whole chapter on that in this electricity mm -hmm. report. There's really sensible, straightforward tools that have been documented around the world. Mm -hmm. And the number one is pricing. So we have on-peak and off-peak pricing for households, but the difference between on and off-peak is, is only a little over two times, which doesn't work. It doesn't give people much incentive to do the laundry on the weekends or at yeah. night, to bother programming your dishwasher or whatever so that it runs at night. Mm -hmm. It just isn't worth it. The research shows that you need ideally three to four or five times the difference between on, on peak and off peak. And that oh. much better reflects what it really costs, especially in Ontario, because right. we have so much power at night. Right. And so there is almost no environmental consequence and very little cost consequence mm -hmm. if you use electricity at night. Mm -hmm. Because uh, usually we've got lots of it left over, sort of lying around, looking for some place to go. Mm -hmm. And we could financially be better off, environmentally be better off, right. if we made it cheaper for everybody, businesses and individuals, to use that power at night and charge a lot more to use power when it costs us a lot to provide. And that would also help with solar. Right. Because solar has the great advantage of providing the most power. Mm -hmm. Guess what? When it's hottest which mm -hmm. is when we need it the most. Mm -hmm. But we don't reflect that advantage in the way we pay for solar. So mm -hmm. we have, we're using pricing wrong, both in demand and in supply, so it's no wonder that we have a mismatch. And this Absolutely. is easily fixable by the province. Right, so some common sense policies could be implemented that would be environmentally friendly, but also help reduce energy costs that are Absolutely. felt by the consumer. Absolutely, right. and reduce the, the um, make the whole, energy, uh, at least electricity system, mm -hmm. more cost effective. Mm -hmm. It's a $21 billion a year system. It's enormous. It's right. more than a third the cost of our health, entire health system. And yet we continue to do economically foolish things. Mm.